it's Phantom here and welcome back to a brand new video everybody. So in today's video I am going to be going over some worlds in Wizard 101 that I think are criminally underrated just like in the sense that I feel like these worlds don't really get as much praise as they probably should just for certain aspects I suppose like regarding them as you pretty much quest throughout each world so anyways without further ado I believe I have four worlds on this list so let's hop right into the first one so the first world on this list that I think is extremely, extremely underappreciated might actually shock some people, but it is going to be the world of Dragonspire. Now, I know a lot of people aren't really the biggest fan of this world as I definitely agree with them in the fact that it's definitely not the best looking world and it is definitely not the most fun world to quest in as because of like the uh <laughs> you know some certain spells that uh, some enemies cast you know when you're questioned throughout the world but really where i think this world which factor specifically that i think is super duper underrated is the storyline that it actually has so if you guys don't know recently in the life walkthrough i had quested through this world on my life wizard soloed it listened to all of the dialogue and everything and just listening to the dialogue, I don't know if, like, this might be sort of due to, like, a nostalgia factor, and also because I hadn't done the world in quite a long time up until that point, but the story to me, the actual story behind Dragonspire, I felt that it was actually pretty interesting. It was actually pretty interesting, and I'm kind of surprised not more people actually talk about it just because of how interesting it is. You know, just going throughout the world on my life, you kind of learn that Dragonspire, of course, like before the Dragon Titan had attacked and everything, it was kind of a similar world to Wizard City, and it had its own parallels in that regard. Until, of course, the Lords of Dragonspire summoned the Dragon Titan, and uh, yeah, you know, everything was in shambles, but that's just a little bit of the backstory. The world also gives a perfect conclusion, at least in my opinion, to Malister's story, or I guess you could say the first iteration of Malister's story, because of course, you know, we know that he pops up many more times since we defeat him here. But uh, the conclusion that we actually see in Dragonspire is really, really good. And I'm not going to lie, the first time that I actually went through the world of Dragonspire and saw the ending, I actually teared up a bit. I actually teared up a bit. And I feel like if a world can provoke those kinds of emotions from me, especially inside of a video game, like that is something special to me. So I really, really like how they wrapped up Malister's first story arc here and this was kind of the point in the story especially when they made him a really really sympathetic villain because you kind of saw firsthand about like how his wife's death affected him and of course the lengths that he would try to go to to actually get her back so you know in that of itself I think Dragonspire is definitely an underrated world pretty much just purely for that factor. Alright, so I think a lot of you expected this one to actually come up on my list, but yes, coming up next on the most, the list of most underrated worlds inside of Wizard 101 is going to be the world of Wisteria. So if you guys have been watching my channel for a long time, you guys will know that I am definitely a pretty big fan of Wisteria. Now, I will admit, I will attribute a lot of my love for the world to the nostalgia factor that uh, that pretty much is instilled within me every time I do quest throughout this world, but my god, dude, this world, in my opinion, is just so, so underrated, and <laughs> it what it really comes down to, for me, is kind of just, I think I've, like, mentioned this in a previous video, but just kind of the sort of vibes that it gives off, I suppose, and I know a lot of you might not actually know what that means, but I suppose it's just a combination of the music and how the world is really, really aesthetically pleasing. I also really, really enjoy the characters as well, and the fact that it is kind of just a pretty much a parody of Wizard City, a funny parody of Wizard City, just all around makes for a world that I have a pretty good time questing in. 
and just I guess sort of like the vibes that it gives off. Let me just like explain this a little bit more. Hold on. Let's just uh, let's just go to an area <laughs> where uh, you know this point is represented more specifically. But uh, yeah, I believe it's in here. All of the Gorgon here, but. Wisteria, I mean, I will admit that it doesn't really necessarily have the best story inside of Wizard 101, definitely not. I mean, it's definitely not the most fleshed out, definitely not the best plotline that they're working with here. But I think that overall, it is just a really, really fun world. And I'm kind of surprised not more people actually do Wisteria. But I suppose, like, in Wisteria, you got a few areas, right? You got a few areas such as, like, this, this uh, final area of the tournament hall. And it just looks so amazing. It just looks so amazing, especially when you kind of take into consideration how long ago this world actually came out. It's pretty impressive to me. And I suppose just like little unique places like this inside of the world, just, I guess they just really do it for me. I don't really know. I definitely would attribute this. I would attribute a lot of this uh, decision to put it on the list to nostalgia. But yeah, for me, Wisteria is definitely an underrated world just because of how much fun I have when I actually just unlock it on one of my wizards and start questing through it. I think that not putting the world of Chrysalis on this list would just be criminal in of itself. But yeah, anyways guys, coming up next we do have the world of Chrysalis here. Now, you know, if you're surprised that this is on the list, honestly, I you shouldn't be. You shouldn't be because if you've been watching me for quite a long time, then you will know that there are certain aspects of Chrysalis that I really do appreciate. And honestly, if I'm being if I'm being frank with you, I really don't understand where all the chrysalis hate comes from. Now, I understand that, what I do understand is that this world has like over 200 quests or something like that. Actually, I'm not sure if it's exactly around that number, but it's probably pretty close. Anyways, it has a lot of quests and it is by far the longest world inside of this game. So I can understand that the world might become redundant for some players after a while, but really what makes it all worth it for me and the aspect that I think is really the most underrated about chrysalis is going to be the fleshed out storyline that it actually has so if you actually just kind of take a moment i suppose and stop and read the dialogue in chrysalis you'll come to notice that it really does have a very very fleshed out storyline and that might be a product of the fact that they had a lot of time i suppose to flesh out this storyline just because of how fucking long that this world was but i truly truly enjoy it you know you got the story with like the burrowers and you learn about their history and how they've been pretty much been at war with Horganth for quite a long time and how of course they lose Bastion or they lost Bastion to the Shadow Web and then how we recover it for them building alliances you know taking down warlords it's honestly just a lot of fun i suppose like in an attempt to pretty much get closer to morganth that is the bulk of chrysalis you know the climb to morganth's shadow palace and then eventually defeating her from there but it's honestly just really really fun i feel like because when I'm personally questing throughout a world, if it feels like I actually have a purpose when I'm questing throughout that world, then I am a lot more motivated to finish that world. That's kind of just for me. That's kind of just a, I guess, a characteristic of myself when I'm playing this game. But Chrysalis just does a great job of fulfilling that need, I suppose, because I feel like I'm just actually doing something in a side of the world and it's super super satisfying to complete whether you think or whether you think that because of just how long the world is or just because of its story and how rewarding it actually feels chrysalis's story just makes it all worth it in my opinion and i definitely think that people really really underrate the world when it comes to that aspect and i feel like that's something that is really not thought about enough Alright, so last up on the list is going to be the world of Mirage. Now, I definitely think that this world is really, really underrated, even though, in my opinion, I've mentioned this in previous videos, how it is the worst world in the third arc, just by a variety of factors, influenced by a variety of factors, but I think Mirage as a world, though, when I compare it to the rest of the worlds in this game, is definitely an underrated world in my opinion, and that's for a few reasons, so... <laughs> 
anyways, the first one is going to be kind of similar to Wisteria, just I like the vibes that it gives off, that's all, which is really just, like I said, a combination of the music and the appearance, I suppose, and the environment when you're questing throughout the world. I think it's really, really nice. I really do overall like the desert theme of Mirage, and I think it does it a lot better than a certain world inside of this game. But also another important aspect about Mirage that I think is overlooked quite a bit is Mirage was kind of the first world in the, I guess it was like kind of the first world ever to do this, but I think that Mirage for its time, when it had first came out, it pretty much had some of the best world building out of any of the worlds that were ever out during that time. And pretty much what I mean by this is you'd have NPCs, I believe this is the first world that did this, you'd have NPCs for example, like let's just walk over to these guys here, and if I turn up, yeah if I turn up like the sound here and just like take a listen, you can see like that these stagnant NPCs right here are actually just having conversations in the background which I think is a really really nice touch, and even though it is so so simple, it really feels like you're questing through a real world and that you're in like a real settlement society i suppose and that's world building you know that's that's world building to me and like i said it is it is really really simple but i suppose that the effect that it had especially on me and kind of just i guess that contributes to the vibes as well i don't know why i keep talking about vibes in this video but Seriously though, Mirage has some of the best world building inside of this game and I really don't think that that factor gets recognized enough and I actually had a decent amount of fun while questing throughout Mirage and I think it was definitely due to multiple things, you know, including the world building, music, characters, once again, that's another thing. Characters actually. Characters is another thing inside of Mirage that I really really loved as well. You know, character, the character of Istar, the character of Ozzy. All very, very great characters inside of Mirage that whenever their dialogue popped up, I had made sure to read it. So Mirage overall with all of those factors combined, I think is definitely a very, very underrated world that I enjoy actually quite a bit when I'm looking back on it. So anyways though, that is going to be it for this video everyone. I really hope you guys did enjoy. If you did, you could always leave a like or subscribe to the channel if you're looking forward to more content in the future. So anyways, that's going to be all from me though, everyone. I'll see you all in the next video or stream, whatever that may be. So take care and peace out, guys.